Hello and welcome. Today's video is the first part of my two-part centerpiece series. I'm so excited about this because I love making centerpieces. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. For centerpiece number one, I am going to go ahead and start with this uh, wood slice from the Dollar Tree. I love these. Every time I see them in the stores, I have to get all of them because they don't come, well, I don't come across them too uh, often. So yes, I pick up all of them. But anyway, what I have done is simply taken some basic twine ribbon and I just covered up the side of this uh, wooden sphere. I'm not using anything too festive because again, this is gonna be on the bottom of this piece, the bottom of this center piece. And I'm just really wanting to use this wooden piece just to elevate this from the top of the table. But just in case the eye does happen to see it, I do want those sides to be covered. So now that the sides of that uh, wooden piece have been covered, now I'm going to go ahead and just attach that to the bottom of my miniature pie pan, as you see, uh, using simply hot glue. You can use a strong adhesive if you would like. So now I'm going to bring in one of these glass vases from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap the bottom portion of this uh, with some burlap ribbon. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is when it's time for me to decorate with my branches, my berries, even if you want to use flowers, this burlap ribbon will give us something for those uh, decorative pieces to really hold on to. And I'm just securing this again with hot glue. Now that I have my burlap ribbon secured and in place, now I want to go ahead and hot glue this in the middle of this pie pan. Now, do y'all call this a pie pan or do y'all call this a bottle top? I call it a pie pan. I guess that's the inner baker in me. But anyway, let me know down in the comment section what you call it. So now that this piece is assembled, now it's time to start decorating. To add a bit more of the greenery, or as they call it in the florist world, to green it, I'm just gonna take a couple of these tie, garland ties, excuse me, and I'm just gonna wrap these around the base of this uh, vase. And this will also give us something else for our foliage and our other decorations to really grab onto. You guys, when I say this was so simple to make, but it is so adorable. If you don't want to have large centerpieces or you don't have the room for large centerpieces, this small centerpiece is absolutely perfect. It's perfect for a dinner table, a side table. It's perfect. Imagine if you had a number of these lined up down the middle of your table. I think you can take this and simply run with it. So I'm taking some of these uh, pine branches, these faux pine branches from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use some of the faux cedar branches with the white berries on them. And then I'm also going to use some of those snow covered or let's say snow uh, decorated berries and leaves that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Now, if you're like me and you do a lot of crafting and you have like a little stash of leftover pieces of greenery and whatnot, this is the perfect kind of project to use those uh, pieces for. Whenever I'm using my bushes or floral bushes or any um, kind of actual bush that is, I'm always making sure that I get the bang for my buck, making sure that I get every penny, every dime out of those bushes. And the way that you cut those down is the way that you are absolutely sure that you get the most out of them. So once I have my pine down, now I'm just going in with my cedar branches and I'm just going around in that circular motion because this looks like a candle ring, but it's basically just a little miniature uh, wreath, so to speak, if that's what you would call it. Anywho, so I'm doing this in a slower time than what I usually do because I wanted to show you just how easy and how quick this goes. Again, if you're having an event um, or you, you want to do a 
larger amount of these, you can get you a little assembly line going, make sure that you have the actual piece of the centerpiece itself done, and then you can go in around to do your different decorations. That's how I do when I have to do centerpieces um, for weddings and other events. And this kind of work is actually really fun for me. Now with that greening that we did with those two garland ties, we don't even have to worry about using much hot glue because those um, garland ties around the bottom, we just stick our decor into it and it'll still be nice and safe. So once I have all of my berries and my greenery in this, um, what I did to like make this come to life was I filled this vase with some water and I just put one of those floating candles on top and I lit it. And I really love the ambience, the look, the feel that this gave. If you wanted to, you could also use um, some of the harder greenery or the really hard plastic berries and take those and submerge those underneath the water. And I think that will just take that to a whole other step too. Now look at this, how beautiful is this? It was so simple to create, easy to create, and it didn't take much money, much funds at all to create. Absolutely love how this turned out. I am so glad to have you here today. If you are enjoying today's video so far, please make sure that you give me a thumbs up, that you comment down in the comment section, and let me know what you're thinking of this uh, video so far. So let's move on to DIY or centerpiece number two. I am going to take again some of these wooden rounds from the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to take this piece of scrap wood that I have. I finally figured out y'all that this is called fencing wood. So this is again scrap wood that I had and I also had three dowels that I cut down to size. Um, they were actually made from the plunger handles from the Dollar Tree. But I cut those down to the size that I wanted. Um, and what I'm going to do is just take this faux stain, which is acrylic paint and water uh, mixed together. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I stain all of my pieces of wood. So once I have all of my pieces stained, and again, I'm doing the tops and the sides. You don't really have to do the bottoms, but the tops and the sides are absolutely necessary. So there are those three dowels I was telling you about. I forgot to show those in the previous clip. But now to actually start assembling this, you will need your drill, but I promise you this is nothing too hard for you to do. So what I wanted to do first is go ahead and place my wooden slices on the top of my base. And this is going to allow me to see how I want these to be placed um, on this um, wooden board. So to do so, what I have first done was I went ahead and took my wooden slices and I went ahead and drilled the hole right in the middle. And I did this to all three. Now what this is going to do is give me a guideline so that I can therefore take those wooden slices, put them back onto my actual board, which is the foundation of this project. Then I can go ahead and further drill those holes into that board so that we'll have the uh, holes exactly where we need them to be. Anytime you are using a drill, please be sure that you uh, have a piece of scrap wood underneath your project. Um, I kind of forgot to do that once and yeah, the drill went straight through my work surface. Not this one, but just a while ago. So make sure that you have a piece of scrap wood underneath your project. So once I have my holes drilled into the actual base of my foundation uh, of this project, I just went back over these just to make sure that the hole was completely opened um, all the way through to the bottom because we're going to be screwing the dowels in from the bottom of this piece. So now that I have all three holes, now what I want to do is I'll need to go ahead and take my dowels 
and I need to put my pilot holes in the bottom of these as well. Actually on both ends, the bottom and the top end. And to do this, I am taking my time. Yes, I'm holding this down with my hand, but I am being very cautious and I'm taking my time while I'm drilling the holes in the bottom and the tops of these dowels. I don't know what it is, but it's something about here lately, uh, wood and dowels, not dowels, even, but wood and screws and wood drivers and sanding. I don't know. I feel like empowered y'all <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Let me know if you enjoy working with wood. Do you like drilling? Do you like cutting, sanding? You know, what part of it do you like? So now that all of my pilot holes have been drilled, now it's time to actually begin to assemble this uh, piece. Now, the reason that we do pilot holes is because if we just tried to go ahead and drill these together with these screws, hey, we will run the risk of our wood splitting on us and that is something that we don't want to happen. So now to actually begin to assemble this, I have my screws and these are the number six wood screws which have the flat head um, and these are the one and a half inch in length screws. What I did first was just simply took these screws and I put them um, into the holes again from the bottom of this piece, just drilled them in until they just came up above the top surface of the wood. This gave me the capacity and the ability to go ahead and take that wooden dowel and begin to screw it into place. So as you see, once I started screwing it into place, I held it firmly, then I took my drill from the back side of the bottom side, and I went ahead and finished drilling that into place. And when you're drilling these into place, make sure that you go far enough with your screw so that it is nice and flush with the wood itself. So to attach the actual uh, wood slice to the dowel, I'm going to do the same thing. Taking that screw, I'm going to go ahead and run that through until I can see it to, uh, through on the other side. Place that on top of my dowel and go ahead and screw that into place. And of course, making sure that that wooden screw is uh, flush with the top of that slice. So here is my piece all put together. So now I need to give this feet so that it's easy for me to move in and out of place. Um, so I have these little miniature wood slices from the Dollar Tree. They're really nice and rugged and rustic looking. I'm going to go ahead and take eight of these and I'm going to go ahead and create four feet out of the eight. So we're going to take two of these, hot glue them together and again two and two and two and then we'll take each foot and place these hot gluing them in the corners of the bottom of our project so with this project the possibility of decorating this it can go so many ways i love this because it's very very versatile you don't just have to use this for the holidays but you could also use this for like the spring you can use it for fall you could also use this for lamb you can use this for any time of year but this gave me inspiration during this time of year because of just like that woodsy kind of feel so now that it is all put together oh pro tip with those screws on the top as you can see, they are bright silver. What you can do is take some of your acrylic paint that's not watered down and go ahead and just touch that up so that those screws are not really visible. So now the scenery is about to change. I'm in my kitchen, y'all, on my workbench in my kitchen. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to go ahead and decorate this for the holiday. Now, I am not using any florist foam. I'm not using any star foam. I'm not using any pool noodles. I'm just really simply taking my picks and I'm pulling these apart and placing them where I want them to go. And the base of it, I'm starting off with some of those artificial pine branches. And all of these came from the Dollar Tree, y'all. Dollar Tree has really been up and up their game with like the artificial greeneries. Man, and I'm, I'm loving it. 
So I started off with the base of the pine branches. Then I came in with some of that um, lamb. It's like a cross between lamb ears and eucalyptus. I used that next. And then I used also some of the eucalyptus leaves, like the silver dollar eucalyptus that has the glitter on it. Because for me, that kind of represents like the snowy kind of side of winter. Uh, then to finish it off, I am going to accent with these clusters of these beautiful red berries. And I'm also going to use um, some pine cones just to bring in not just that brown to break up the green and the red, but it's also going to bring in some um, aromatics. Those pine cones from the Dollar Tree, they do have that beautiful uh, cinnamon fragrance to it. And I love it. It's got my kitchen lit up, y'all. So again, you can take this and use any kind of florals you would use, whatever kind of greenery. Let me know, because y'all know I love talking to y'all. Let me know what you would do as far as greenery, florals. You know, how would you use this piece in your home decor? So I love, love, love the thought of this being so long because this would be beautiful in the in the middle of a big dining room table. Um, the first one, it would be great for a small little table, but this one, I think would be gorgeous in the middle of a long table. So the pedestals that we have, that we've made, what I'm going to do is take three of these heavy bottomed, uh, I guess you can call them little candle holders, that's what they are, from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to simply take some water and fill these up and then just drop some of those floating candles in the top, light these up, and you guys, the look that this gives is so store finished. It looks like it's something that possibly came out of a magazine, like a southern home, a country living. Y'all, I love how this turned out. This looks so professional. Again, store finish, absolutely beautiful. Take this and make it your own. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video as much as I have enjoyed bringing it to you. Make sure that you stay tuned for part two of my centerpiece uh, series. Well, as always, my prayer for you is that you continue to stay blessed and you continue to stay healthy. No matter how you celebrate this season, remember why you celebrate. Until next time, be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.